Welcome to my unboxing of the Hubson Q4 Nano. This is the box, as you can see. It's incredibly tiny. I don't think it does it justice, actually. When you see this thing in person, you can see, see it through this front here. You really can't believe how small this thing is. I mean, I own a Hubson H107D, which you think is small anyway, and you couldn't get smaller than that. And this thing really is tiny. Okay, so let's see what we get in the box. The mini controller. Wow, that is so tiny. I actually thought it was bigger than this on pictures and other people's reviews, but it really is really tiny. Okay, so the quad comes on this little box here. I think those are bands. Yeah, bands. Wow, it is so small. It's tiny. Oh, I was looking for the charger. It's in here. Some spare blades. I wondered if I could use the same blades for the Hobson H107D, but it really is a lot smaller. So we've got quite minimalistic, really. We've got the charger, the controller, and the tiny quad, and the blades. I think there are some instructions in here. Seem fairly straightforward. Now that's interesting. It says that there is a Mode 1 version of the controller, but I couldn't find anywhere that sold that. I was planning on converting this to Mode 1. There's a couple of videos showing how to do that. Or use my existing hubs and controllers. So. Yeah, very nice box. I think actually... I think I can keep this box and keep it in there. I think that's been one of the problems with the other Hobson is you can't really use the box that they came in to store them. But this one is nice and small, so I think I'll keep that. I thought I'd just make a quick video showing my Hobson Q4 Nano Mode 1 conversion. Now there's a couple of videos online showing how to do this, but I thought I'd just show you the progress. So this is the controller, it's the tiniest controller I've, I've ever seen. What you have to do is you have to get a very hot soldering iron and you have to have a solder sucker and underneath you have to spend a huge amount of time on removing the solder underneath and the idea is that these pots come out like that now I spent literally hours removing all the solder from the back it is really difficult so if you're gonna do this be prepared to wait a long time for the pots to come out. I actually destroyed one of these on the first attempt because I got fed up of doing the desoldering and I used some pliers and yanked these out and it destroyed something in the pot so I wouldn't recommend that in fact I'm not sure I recommend doing this at all the reason I wanted to do it is to have a a Hobson controller that is really small you can on Banggood buy a mode 1 transmitter that's used for the X4 However, I didn't want to do that. Also, I have the Hobson Spyhawk transmitter, which does bind to this as well, which I've already converted to Mode 1. So this was just a, a little bit of a project for me, really. So on these pots, you the, swap them over. So the one that was on um, this side then becomes this side. You turn it upside down, and then the throttle becomes on the, on the correct side for Mode 1. 
and same with this one. The only difference is you bend the pins out at the side here and attach wires going round the back so that they connect. It's the only way to do it. Now in the manual it does say that there is a Mode 1 version of this but I can't find anywhere to buy it so I don't know if that's going to be released at a later date. Anyway, I'm going to bend these pins and solder the wires and you can see how I do that next. Now the leads I'm going to use are these micro JST connectors. I'm going to remove the ends and then strip the wire and then connect them. They're not perfect for the colours. I've seen other people using different coloured wires but I don't have that but these wires will work. Okay, that's all the connectors removed and the wires stripped. It's some laugh. Okay, so that's by no means fun at all. It's quite tedious, however, it's quite straightforward. It's just time consuming. So these wires here, they connect directly in the same order to the other side. Same with this one. Just get you a different angle there so you can see, but there are other videos showing how to do this. Okay, everything's back together, so let's see if it binds. Turn the transmitter on first, and then the quad. We've got instant binding, so that's good news. I'll just try to throttle. Yep, that's working. So that's my video on how to convert the Hubson Q4 Nano into Mode 1. It's very tedious and takes around about three hours, so it's up to you whether you want to go ahead and do it yourself. Like I say, there are other controllers available, but this one is really small, so I'm quite happy with the conversion. One thing you might want to do after the mode conversion is recalibrate the controller. You do that by holding the sticks to the top left and then turn it on. You should get a green flashing light center the sticks and then move the sticks around here clockwise. Same with this one. Then hold down the aileron trim and then it should flash red. Then you can turn it off and it's calibrated.